Hello and welcome to HITC Sport and alright let's just get this one out of the way first okay? Let's all agree that this isn't the f***ing scarf show okay? Y'all wanted it back for some insane reason but for the love of god no more scarf comments in the comment section below. This isn't the f***ing Zoella channel. So I'm gonna leave it on here alright to satisfy your fantasies but no more comments alright? Please no more. Anyway, this is a quick little rundown on the goings on football in the last few days, including a few insane transfer rumours. Like Antonio Conte, thinking that the answer to all his problems might come in the form of some fella who, if he was a horse, would have been brought outside and shot in the head five years ago. But more on him later. Pretty sure Arsene Wenger said, after, you know, when Van Persie decided he got sick of losing 8-2, that he would never again sell to Manchester United. Uh, right. It's it's all a bit awkward now. Not only that, but he's going to be gift wrapping his best player to a man who once called him a specialist in failure. He is a specialist in failure. He is a specialist in failure. Specialist in failure. If this Alexis Sanchez deal does go through, I wouldn't be surprised if we're all going to have to start talking Arsenal fans down off a bridge. They have a habit for being a touch over dramatic. Apparently, Henrik Mkhitaryan is holding up the deal. Despite every last man, woman, and child affiliated with Manchester United screaming at him to get the hell out of the city, go Henrik, sign the damn contract. Go play with Danny Welbeck and Alex Iwobi. We promised our fans aren't complete nutters who would probably burn your car if you missed a penalty. I mean, I honestly wouldn't put it past some of them. It's a bit like when a couple are trying to negotiate a divorce, so the man can finally go off with that young Chilean 20-something, stuck in her own dead-end relationship with a stuffy Frenchman, only for the wife to decide, no, I'd rather not sign those divorce papers, ending any possible happiness for the three of them. I'm not sure why I've decided to give Mkhitary in the sex change in that analogy, but just go with it. The Armenian is apparently holding off for a return to Borussia Dortmund, and United need to keep holding on to the receipts from that club, I swear to God. Having said all that, by the time this video goes out, this whole thing could be very much out of date. Sanchez could have retired, Mkhitary could be playing for Dagenham Redbridge, I mean it's not like me to do a video with a ridiculously short shelf life. So Man City seem to be hurtling towards the finish line this season, and let's be honest, it does not look like anyone can beat them. Four f***ing hours, why do I even bother? Lucas Moura has also been linked to Man United. Is this 2012 all over again? No, because we don't have a bunch of 13 year olds warning on social media that the world's going to end because John Cusack told them in a shitty movie. Having said that, 2012 was also the year that Arsenal's best player snubbed Man City in favour of moving to United, so... Maybe we are. Mora was a man who was chased incessantly by Sir Alex Ferguson six years ago, before PSG landed him for nearly 38 million pounds. It seemed like big money back then. These days, it's about the same sort of cash that the Prince of Paris goes out to the local shops to buy a bunch of Freddos with. It's not though, is it? At the time, Ferguson said this, I find it quite amazing that a club can pay 45 million euros for a 19 year old boy. When somebody's paying 45 million for a 19 year old boy, well you have to say, the game's gone mad. I won't say anything. One player on the move is Theo Walcott off to fulfill a lifelong ambition of becoming the next Aaron Lennon. Nah, let's be fair, I think Walcott's getting a lot of criticism this week. Bit of unfair criticism maybe. A lot of fans are basically saying good riddance, get out of the club, don't forget to take your bag of shit that is your end product with you. Choosing to overlook the fact that this is a man who's nearly played 400 times for this club. He's been involved in 108 Premier League goals. Only four players are better than that. Henri, Burkham, Van Persie and Wright. Fair enough, the country stupidly built him up as the next Thierry Henry. Why though? Because he was paraded at Highbury in his dad's shirt at the age of 16? Because Ericsson left his brain on the kitchen counter when he brought up the World Cup instead of 20 goal a season strikers? None of this was Walcott's fault, and I know I'm beginning to sound a bit like his mother, but we're forgetting he's picked up some serious injuries along the way. It was only last season. Last season he hit 19 goals in 37 games in all competitions. This isn't just some fella who was hiding behind the mascot for 11 years, or bribing the chairman to let him stay. I mean, he was actually a decent player for the Gunners. Yeah, alright, he's not Henri. He's not going to get a statue bill outside the stadium. He's not going to score a handball to knock our country out of the World Cup. All right, I'll drop it. I seem to mention that in every video now. I mean, it was nine years ago. Did Walcott ever say he was going to be the next Henri? I don't think so. Is Everton the right move for him? He'll get games there, but knowing Sam Allardyce will probably turn him into a fucking right back. Arsenal have also been linked to Pierre Emerick Aubameyang from Dortmund and Malcolm from Bordeaux. I'll be honest, lads, I don't know much about Malcolm other than the fact that his mother has a voice so screechingly loud that she used to interfere with my TV signal. But then again, would you be pissed if your husband was a crystal meth dealer? Why am I talking about a TV show from the 90s? Not if you are gonna have a clue what I'm on about. Although, to be fair, I think that's 80% of the time. Why am I still wearing this? Am I just gonna be stuck wearing this now for the next 20 videos? It's hot in here. I might just genuinely have to start doing my videos outside. But anyway, Aubameyang would be a great signing. As you can see, he's already got experience of playing in England against a lad who looks as though he runs the local butchers. Still probably better than Per Mertesacker and in front of a crowd just as passionate and vibrant as Stamritz. Sorry Arsenal fans, alright? That was such a bad comment. So anyway, moving on, let's touch on Newcastle's transfer business.
Yeah, the transfer window basically might not even exist for all that Newcastle fans are concerned. It's almost the third week of January and Rafa Benitez does not even know his own budget. And talks have now broken down regarding the sale of the club to Amanda Staveley, so it's all just gone absolutely. Apparently the club is still on the market, but these latest developments are probably enough to make any Geordie want to stick the nearest fork into his eye socket. Anything is better than the alternative of watching Mo Diame pretend like he belongs on a football pitch for the next three years. And by the way, as Newcastle fans, while you're here, we just opened a Newcastle United exclusive channel called Jordy Boot Boys. Basically, you remember all those fan views I was doing? We're doing Newcastle ones and we're sticking them on that channel. Jordy Boot Boys, go over there and subscribe if you're a Newcastle fan. And even if you're not, you just want to be a friend. Okay, Chelsea, I get it. You're struggling for goals lately. Alvaro Morata seems to be pulling off a perfect impression of Danny Welbeck. You probably need a striker. But good lord, what on earth is possessing them to go after Andy Carroll? Carroll's a decent player when he's fit, but... When he's fit, Chelsea should remember Carroll very well. You know, from that day when Liverpool and Chelsea tried to outdo each other in terms of who could waste the most amount of money in one 24 hours. Liverpool were forced to give Fernando Torres to Chelsea back in 2011, and then a few hours later went out and spent 35 million on Andy Carroll. Which is a bit like selling your Jaguar and replacing it with a f***ing lawnmower. Carroll has only played more than 20 league games in a season three times since leaving Newcastle. Chelsea, if you sign Carroll, I'm sure your physio will be delighted, but... Christ above. Andy f***! You might as well sign Andy from Toy Story for the amount of time he's gonna get him on the f***ing pitch. If Carroll does go to Chelsea, not only will most blue supporters spit out their morning porridge and demand a season ticket refund, but it looks like Michi Batchawai will be out the door. Don't feel bad if you've forgotten who he is, I'd say his own mother has forgotten what he looks like. He might as well have been locked in an Austrian wine cellar for the last two years, the amount of impact he's made. Christ, that's a bit bleak actually. Just like his World Cup chances. If Batchawai goes to West Ham, then that'll probably mean the end of Javier Hernandez. A fella once regarded as one of the hottest strikers in England, and now looks about as effective as a wet Sock. 115 grand a week for this man. Excuse me while I get sick into a bucket. Moving away from transfers for a second, have you ever wondered what a club dooming themselves to relegation actually looks like? Stoke City had a busy week. Mark Hughes almost dared the club into sacking him. After basically asking, who else is out there that could do a better job than me? About 20 minutes after getting rid of him, the Stoke board probably went, oh, oh shit. He was right. So the club went out, presumably searched around the unemployment centre and found the first fella they saw in the canteen. I mean presumably, I mean I can't understand any other reason why Paul Lambert has a job as a Premier League manager. Christ the wall, the most impressive thing he's managed to do in the last five years is discover how to put in contact lenses. Other than that, he's just been walking around blind for the last few years. To be fair, it's probably not bad advice if he's gonna have to be forced to watch Barry Hino trap a ball every week. Speaking of which, I feel like I'm aiming verbal digs at Saito every week. Considering he has enough money to have me killed and dumped in a nearby lake, no questions asked. Let's face it lads, if I go missing, the only thing you'll be worried was the safety of the f***ing scarf. I'm guessing Barry Hino doesn't care about YouTube criticism too much. But lads, the kid who hasn't scored in two years, he's a striker, turned up to the Stoke training ground ready to board the bus to Manchester United, ready to wreak more havoc on the bench. He just, uh, he just turned up 24 hours too early. So not only can he not score, but he also doesn't know how to work a f***ing calendar. Sido, please don't have me killed. Things aren't going so great for Sunderland. No shit, they probably needed to have to burn one of their plastic seats after this happened. It did seem a bit odd that Chris Coleman decided to chuck away the Wales job for our championship relegation dogfight. I wonder if he's regretting it now. Despite the team forgetting the basics and how to defend or play football, Lewis Grabman still managed to score 12 in 19 games before deciding that he'd rather not play in front of supporters who who feel that watching the game and taking a piss aren't mutually exclusive activities. My apologies on the fans, I know the majority of you are fine, it's just... I can't get over this one fella. Jesus lad, toilets are there for a reason. They've also got rid of a man who hasn't approved since he was 16. No, Theo, sit down, I'm done with you. James Vaughan is the guy. He's left for Wigan after six months. And also Jack Rodwell, another former Everton prodigy, has also asked to quit the club. The day that man leaves, I wouldn't be surprised if the Sunderland town mayor issues a public holiday. Ryan Giggs has finally done it. No, no, not that. He's landed a top job in management. Sort of. Without having to lift a finger. Let's face it, the Welshman was a great player for Manchester United and Wales when he could be bothered. But since announcing his burning ambitions to be a manager, he's literally just spent his time touting himself for a bunch of jobs where he's seriously underqualified. And now suddenly, he's the Wales manager. To be fair, I'm not that surprised. Neither Mark Hughes or Gary Speed have much experience, and Chris Coleman had only succeeded in driving several clubs into brick walls. Best of luck, Sunderland. Right, I think that basically wraps everything up. Basically, just a brief little roundup of the transfer news. Considering we haven't had much one on one time in about two weeks, I'd say. I, you, have you noticed, you haven't noticed, you, you no, of course, of course you haven't, you all have lives to get on with, children to ignore, wives to disappoint, it's, 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 it's fine, I, I get it, alright, what am I talking about, you're all about 15 years old, let's hope they don't get Wi-Fi in prison, anyway, cheers for watching lads, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, it does help, and as always, I'll talk to you in a while, don't forget Newcastle fans, Geordie Boot Boys.